So, another thing about Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, he was the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That I did know. And he was born literally in the Kaaba. This is the clearest narration about Sayyidina Ali's birth, is that he was born in the Kaaba. Another thing about Sayyidina Ali was that he swore by Allah in front of the enemies of the Prophet salam that he will protect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he joined the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in every single expedition. Every military expedition the Prophet moved, he moved with him. Now there is one, the, the expedition to Tabuk, it says that he wanted to go and the Prophet ﷺ said, no, this time stay behind. I've entrusted you with Medina. And then the, you know, the famous notoric saying, you are to me like Harun is to Musa. So this is a very famous saying about Sayyidina Ali. So do you know how many military expeditions the Prophet was involved in though? Um, I don't know. Let me see. Yes, speak up. Uh, I don't think so. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Say Allahumma. Allahumma. Salli. Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Muhammadin Wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa barik Wa salamu alay You have to say this often, you know, keep repeating often, often Inshallah, you'll get special knowledge about how Sayyidina Ali really lived, how Prophet والسلام, really lived. You keep, you often repeat it when you recite. That's why at the end of each lesson we, we say that because we want the essence that Allah gave directly to Prophet والسلام, and the family of the Prophet والسلام, the one that he mentions in the Quran. So that's why. But you have to, and I think this was assigned to you at one point. What else do you know about Sayyidina Ali? Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, Imam al Fuqara. He was the Imam of the poor people. Why? Because he did not accept. Filling his stomach while anyone else was hungry. Do you know who his, who his beloved wife was? Who he was married uh, to first? Um, Come on, yes teacher, no teacher, speak up. No teacher, no teacher. Okay, do you know anybody by the name of Fatima? Um, Az-Zahra. I love the part that I married someone named Fatima to Zahra. And I felt like Sayyidina Ali. And of course, this goes into another topic. But do you know anybody by the name of Fatima? Uh, no, but I, I've heard the name. Okay. This was the daughter of the Prophet. Say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Ali was married to her. And he had Hassan and Hussein with her. And you will, those are the grandsons of the Prophet ﷺ, the most mm, famous ones, uh, Hassan and Hussein. And they also, there's very, very interesting stories about them also. Particularly Hassan. Hussein is a battlefield, you know, uh, ending. But Sayyidina Hassan, he actually had the political side. And he, subhanAllah, he, you know, the Prophet ﷺ was correct that he would, you know, he would become martyrdom at the hands of 
those he had already brought together. He brought the Prophet ﷺ said that he will bring, you know, two great parties together, and he did that, actually. So all this is history, you know, Islamic history. And um, it's important. Uh, so what else did you learn about Sayyidina Ali? Because this was assigned to you at one point. Is that correct? I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So his first, uh, his first encounter on the battlefield, really, in terms of the most famous battlefield, the first one was Badr. Have you seen the movie The Messenger or The Message? Uh, no. No. Okay, this is where the first battle occurs, according to the movie. Of course, they don't know about everything that ha they didn't. They didn't really go into much military detail or historical tactical details that Muslims were using. They didn't do that, but they had the Battle of Badr, which took place in Ramadan. Sayyidina Ali was among the first that the commander of the believers, who was the uncle of the Prophet والسلام, by the name of Hamza. He was the commander of the believers on that day of Badr. And he called out Sayyidina Ali to duel against, because the dueling, you know what dueling is? When you're on the battlefield, you know, people, like three people from one part of the of the enemy versus three part of the other, you know, the foes of those enemies, basically. The two parties, they pick out three people each and then they duel. You know what a duel like is? They face each other with the sword and everything, you know, whatever they have. You understand? Yes. Yes, teacher, come on. Teacher. Very good. So now he was among the first to come out for that duel. And he actually had a two-edged sword that was made specifically for him. And he won. And at that time, he was, let's see, so he was nine. Yeah, he was about 18, 17, 18 on that first day of Badr. He, he couldn't have been older than, and, so, and actually he says that towards the end of his life. He dies in his, you know, he was martyred in his 60s. But he says that, um, <clears throat> he says to the people, how can you all tell me that I do not know about battle? When my first battle, I was a teenager, and here I am now well in my 60s, and there's not a single battle that Prophet ﷺ went on that I did not accompany him on. Um, so that's very strange, basically, is what he's saying there. He's saying, like, it proves that you all do not know what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, he definitely had a lot of battles at the end of his uh, of his life as we have it here so i mean what else did you so you never learned anything else besides the fact and also i mentioned the fact that you know well he was the fourth khalifa let me explain that too now let me go back because i explained the end but now i have to go back to the beginning basically uh, when the Prophet ﷺ left, okay? So after him, you have the famous Abu Bakr story. Radiallahu yes. anhu. You have, you're familiar with Abu Bakr Siddiq, right? He was the first Khalifa, the first yes. successor of the Prophet ﷺ. Yes. Yes, teacher, speak up, you know. Yeah, because man, you know, Ali is gonna, Ali is definitely a man. <laughs> I mean, imagine he's on the battlefield at that age, you know. Anyway, uh, he was the one that people, like the Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, would, he would keep Sayyidina Ali close to him to get his, you know, his verdicts on a lot of matters. He would always refer to, because Sayyidina Ali was, was the closest to the Prophet ﷺ in, 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 uh, in, in family ties. Is the fact that they all had ties to Prophet, but Ali, Sayyidina Ali, out of all the males, he had the closest tie to the Prophet, alayhi salam. By, you know. Because Sayyidina Hamza, who was the commander, if you watch that movie also, it will show you that he was martyred on the battlefield of Uhud. Okay, there was a woman, one of the three 
who had come out on the battle of Badr from the Mushrikeen. The Mushrikeen, they had her father and her brother and her uncle on that dual field when they dueled and Hamza killed her father. You understand? Yes, teacher. Very good. So in the second battle, she hired a professional spear uh, thrower by the name of Wahshi. He was, you know, he was dark, very dark skin. He was a slave. He was into shows, you know, and he would, they would show how well he actually threw his spear. You know, women would come out and dance and she just had this little hole that would just be twisting around and around and around really quickly as the music went on. And he would be able to throw the spear through the hole without touching her. And then, you know, that lady named Hind, she hired him because, you know, Hamza had killed her father. So she, she hired him to, to assassinate Sayyidina Hamza. And um, so... So once that happened, subhanAllah, it's interesting, it's interesting. But Islam continued to grow and Sayyidina Ali definitely, you know, was the lion. After that, you understand. So after Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, he, his reign was very short, like two and a half years. Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu anhu, he became Khalifa because before Sayyidina Abu Bakr passed, he assigned, well, after he asked everybody about Sayyidina Umar, even he said, Sayyidina Ali said, yes. He said, you know, I will definitely vouch that he is what you mentioned of him, what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned of him, what the Quran was revealed, speaking in reference to his assertion or his assertions. So this is why Sayyidina Umar became the Amir al-Mu'minin. They could not call him Khalifa twice because there was already Abu Bakr as-Siddiq who was the Khalifa to Rasulullah. The Khalifa means successor because that's how it happened. And then after he, when he was passing, he passed the title to Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab who ruled for eight years and he did not allow Sayyidina Ali to go out of Medina. <laughs> Do you understand? He kept him close. He made sure. Whenever he traveled, he would leave him in charge or he would go with him. This was the protocol. So he would refer a lot of things to, and he was a judge. And he was also responsible, you understand, for distributing, you know, the various stockpiles that, the, that was in the Muslim state houses or state warehouses. So he's a very, very big figure. And from there also, you can say that he was in the, because Sayyidina Umar ruled for eight years, there's a lot of things that happened. It will help you understand to look into the history of how he actually established, you know, the state in the affairs of Muslims at that time. It's very, very, very profound, pertaining to one thing that I will not leave out regarding Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab, was that he was among the four most deep thinkers of the tribe of Mecca. There was not a person who was more of a contemplator in terms of outcome of discussions. It's as if when you faced him, you were in actuality seeing a deeper end of your situation. Um, realize, of course, I want to say clearly and plainly, there is a very firm, famous saying, you will definitely be able to refer to the Quran about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes example of prophets, you know, like Prophet Adam, like Prophet Ibrahim, like Prophet Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam, like Prophet Ishaq, Yaqub, like Prophet uh, Shu'aib, like Prophet Ilyas. All these prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran and other prophets that he does not mention, he put their personalities in the 
closest ones to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He put their abilities in them. He put their, you understand, because this how, is how Allah does what He wants. You understand? Yes, teacher. Very good. So he had traits of Nubuwa. He had, you know, traits which were similar to Prophet. He did. Then he was martyred also, okay, because there was a, a hired uh, servant or hired slave from one of the lands that he had conquered. And this slave, he had a disagreement with his master, who was a Muslim. So when he came to Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Umar told him to go and serve his master well. This is what he told him. Go and serve your master patiently. I do believe he added patience there. But this did not satisfy this non-Muslim. He was actually a fire worshiper. This did not satisfy him enough. And what he did later, before he did it, of course, he said, this whom they call the leader of the believers, meaning Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. He is known as being the most just of them. So that's why when they go to him, he gives them justice. But when we go to him, he gives us whatever he likes. So he added that on and basically he devised his own little plan of course shaitan was there he poisoned a dagger and he went for the fajr salah this is not time where we have secret service making sure that people are unarmed to enter anybody can enter and he makes sure he is early enough to be in the front row and so when sayyidina umar begins the salah he comes out with his poisoned dagger and he stabs him now, Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab lived for a few days later. And while he was alive, the doctor told him, because they had very good doctors with, you know, who treated wounds, obviously, because they used to be on the battlefield. Uh, when they realized that the hole had penetrated to where what he drinks comes out of him instead of it properly digesting, they, they said that he's not going to, he's not going to make it you understand? Yes, teacher. Very good. So, he established, okay, a, a junta. It's really known in, in, in Spanish as junta, which were really the ruling committee. And they had a mission that was to elect one of them at the end of a certain amount of time, six days, one week. And so among them also was Sayyidina Ali. And that's another story. So it would be maybe too much. You would probably fall asleep. And of course, you can follow this on the channel. Have you been following your drills? You got to work on the drills. I think I assigned that to you last time, correct? Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, the throat, very important because, you know, there's certain letters in the Arabic, they're not in the English alphabets and vice versa. But anyway, so at the end of that, now let me tell you something about the six that he had selected. The six that he had selected, they came from the famous, notorious group who were most referred to as the people of Jannah. The people of Jannah. They're known as the 10 people of Jannah. Of course, if you remember who the four Khalifas are, then you already have four out of 10. If you know the other 10, then there is reward behind that. Allah Ta'ala knows best what it is. But you had... Also, a young uncle of the Prophet والسلام, known as Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, the conqueror of Qadisiyah. He was the fifth. And then you have 
And then you have Zubair ibn al-Awam. Zubair ibn al-Awam. And then you have Talha ibn Ubaidullah. So that is three. Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah. That's another four. Sa'id ibn Zaid. That's another five. And Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. That's six. So you would have all of the Ashra Mubashirina Bil Jannah. By that time, some of them had passed away. The likes of the trusted one of the Ummah, Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu anhu had died to the plague, so he could not be among them. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq had already returned to Allah. He could not be among them. Sayyidina Umar, he is going back to Allah. He could not be among the junta at that time. You understand? Yes, teacher. Very good. So, uh, there was also an appointed one to lead the salah. He was very wise again, Sayyidina Umar. He wanted for Suhail, a Rumi, to lead the salah while this was going on. Because he did not want any of those six who were remaining at that time to be in the leading position salah-wise. Because then they would get influence to be the leader. He did not want that. So he put come someone who was not of the Ashara Mubashirin in that position. Anyway, at the end of the day, Sayyidina Uthman, who was also, again, the Khalifa, or we should say, today he is known as the third Khalifa of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was the scribe at one point, and it is most famous to note that he, meaning Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu, would read the entire Qur'an in one raka'ah. People witness him do that. Now, something else is that he was a very quiet and he was also very aged. He was, he was older than many of the companions. He was very patient. His history also ends with the mob, a Muslim mob, killing him in his home. So, but he actually, out of all of them so far, he ruled the most. He ruled about a good 14 years, if I'm not mistaken. So his ruling in Islam really spread. Now we enter into the fitna. And the fitna erupts with people saying, since he's been martyred, those who had done that to him must pay the consequences right now. Those who are supposed to be uh, paying the consequences, they side with Sayyidina Ali, who everybody agrees that he is the Khalifa, but what, they, what different groups want him to do amounts to different things. So that was the problem there. Now, um, again, the... Quran gives the best explanation to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And Allah ta'ala, what he said, referred to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Do you understand that? Yes, teacher. So the better you understand your Quran, the better you will be able to function as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his closest companions, his closest Aids and assistance were. Now, um, today, let's see. Let's go over quickly all of the Qamariya Shamsiya from your surah to whatever the time permits us. Go ahead. What surah are you on? Um. Are you on surah Bayina, actually? Um... I think you on Surah Bayina, Ali. You know what? Let's finish. Read the last. Read from where you ended in Surah Bayina. And so I want you to finish this Surah. Subhanallah. I know you will do a good good job. Because this Surah, you actually are reading it, you know, better than I, I, I read it when I first read it. Do you know that? No. No teacher. No teacher. Why don't you ask how old I was when I was reading it first time? 
Your teacher was three years old. He had his bottle in his hand, his hair was braided, and he had nothing more on than a diaper. Can you imagine that? And he wanted to recite this surah so badly. This was the surah that he wanted to recite so much. Whatever he could utter, he did, and that was the best he could do. Where did you stop in this surah? How many lines do you have left? Um, uh, I think three. Three? Oh, man. Let's do it. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Recite after me. Let's do it. Bismillah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Okay. Inna alladhina kafaru. Do we have inna alladhina amanu? Yes. Inna alladhina amanu. Wa amilu salihat. لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار Go ahead, read from the beginning إن الذين آمنوا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات Good. Hold on a minute. Let me do it again then. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَئِكَ هُمْ خَيْرُ الْبَرِيَّةِ Repeat it one more time. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Okay, do me a favor. Don't say amanu. Don't nasal the Hamza Fatha. It's amanu. So do. It. Mm -hmm. Jazaa'uhum Jazaa'uhum Inda Rabbihim Inda Rabbihim Jannatu Adinin Tajiri Jannatu Adinin Tajiri Min Tahtiha Al-Anhaar Min Tahtiha Al-Anhaar Okay, so this is a Nunasakin, and this is a Shamsiya. Al Anhal is a Nunasakin. Her came after it, so you have to make it really clear. So read it. Al Anhal. خالدين فيها أبدا. خالدين فيها رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه رضي الله 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 رضي because the her at the end, putting a sukun. Good. Start from with the lesson and, and read over it. Let's hear it. Good. 
جزاؤهم عند ربهم جنات عدن تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه Zalika don't stretch. Some things you've been stretching, also your your ikhfa somehow is lost. Ikhfa, but nasal also remember the nasal is actually a sound that is used in Quranic science of recitation. Tajweed, nasal, you have different type of nasals. So you have to know which one to use, when to use light one, when to use heavy one, and when to use combined one uh, so there's that and then when to use it without combining it which is practically the light and heavy portion so go ahead um yeah this is nunusakin this is ikhfa the ta came after the nunusakin which makes it ikhfa so it's light ikhfa you cannot say in in, in this recitation but at least, you know, you can go over it. Inshallah, I'll try to put it on the YouTube, okay? Do you understand? I will try to yes. put, yes, because I think the other surahs, I think most of them, like the small, all the, all the other surahs you take in, I think they're there. This one might already be there, actually, Ali, this whole surah. Okay? I think we've had that. But I'll, if, I, if I see it, I'll get it to you. If I produce it, I'll get it to you, okay? But go use it also, because... Every new one goes over everything, everything that we've covered for the his, you know, portion of this, okay? Yes, teacher. Allahumma salli. Allahumma salli. Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammadin. Wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammadin. Wa barik wa salamu alayhi. Wa barik wa salamu alayhi. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام